If you recall, we've been uh, looking at the seven uh, penitential or Psalms of repentance um, in the Psalms. And there are seven of those. We have looked at Psalm 6, 32, 38, uh, 51, and 102. So 102 is the fifth one. And we're going to conclude uh, part two of Psalm 102 this morning. And um, we'll also see there are there's some prophecy in the psalm as well. I remind you of... Um, Wednesday uh, Bible study in the uh, fireside room on doctrine uh, beginning on the 24th that's a Thursday at seven o'clock I'll begin a study of the book of Daniel you're welcome to uh, come to that uh, likely be in the chapel and uh, you'll hear more about it um, Sunday morning worship at 9 30 and at 11 o'clock for contemporary and certainly I'd love to see you uh, we have child uh, ministry uh, provided for the 11 o'clock service and um, let's look at this. Um, it starts out again with, uh, Hear my prayer, O Lord, let my cry come to you. Do not hide your face from me in the day of my distress. So obviously a cry out to God as he comes um, to repent. And we looked at the first 11, 12 verses, but let's begin at uh, verse 13 and read the rest of the psalm. The psalmist says, You will rise and have pity on Zion. It is the time to favor her. The appointed time has come. For your servants hold her stones dear and have pity on her dust. Nations will fear the name of the Lord, and the kings of the earth will fear your glory. That's a prophecy. For the Lord builds up Zion. He appears in his glory. He regards the prayer of the destitute and does not despise their prayer. Again, a part of this prayer of repentance. Let this be recorded for the generations to come, so that a people yet to be created may praise the Lord. That he looked down from his holy height from heaven, the Lord looked on the earth to hear the groans of the prisoners, to set free those who were doomed to die, that they may declare in Zion the name of the Lord and in Jerusalem his praise when peoples gather together in kingdoms to worship the Lord. Another prophecy. He has broken my strength. Now he goes back to his, his prayer for deliverance. Uh, he's saying, God, you've broken my strength in mid-course, verse 23. He has shortened my days. Oh, my God, I say, take me not away in the midst of my days, you whose years endure throughout all generations. Of old you laid the foundation of the earth. The heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. A third prophecy. They will wear out like a garment. You will change them like a robe, and they will pass away. But you are the same, and your years have no end. A second note to God's eternal uh, standing. Now, the children of your servants shall dwell secure. Their offspring will be established before you. So he continues, but he goes beyond. I hope you have your coffee with you. He goes beyond just a prayer of repentance here he does cry out to god again in verses 23 and 24 in particular um, asking that his days not be shortened he realizes that he has sinned and he's praying that uh, his life will not be shortened but that god would uh, allow him to endure and last and get through this time of difficulty this time of sin but there are many prophecies referring to the nations one day, uh, worshiping the Lord together, all the kingdoms. Um, I think of Psalm 2, where it talks about the nations reject God and that they should kiss the son lest he be angry. Here in Psalm 102, again, a, a reminder that there is coming a day when all the nations, they will turn to God. So not only the psalmist uh, praying, hear my cry, his cry of repentance, but one day looking forward to when all the nations will seek the Lord, all the kings and kingdoms of the earth will come. And the ultimate uh, prophecy that there'll be a new heaven, a new earth, as Revelation tells us, uh, because he says the heavens and the earth are the work of your hands, verse 25 and 26, but they will perish. They will wear out like a garment. They will, you will change them like a robe. It's like changing your robe. Um, he will recreate 
this earth. And he can do this because, again, uh, you, your years, God, have no end, verse 27. And with God, the children of your servants will dwell secure. We will be with him forever. So it's interesting uh, that this psalm is numbered. Uh, we'll go to Psalm 130 next week, but it's, it's interesting that this uh, is numbered uh, with these repentant psalms um, because there's not as much emphasis on his crying out to God. You see it in verses 1 and 2 and roughly verse 24 and 5 in there, but um, he, um, he really changes the subject and talks a lot about all the earth one day worshiping God and the new heavens and new earth. So I pray you'll uh, continue to look at that, and uh, you might read uh, Psalm 130 ahead for next week. Um, so hope to see you Sunday at either 9.30 or 11, and uh, I'll be telling you more about the book of Daniel study beginning Thursday the 24th at 7 o'clock. God bless all of you, and have a good day. Let's pray. Uh, Father, uh, thank you for these psalms, and Lord, if we sin, may we come to you and repent. Uh, may we remember that you hear our prayers, you hear our cries, and you answer, and you deliver those who come to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye now. Have a great day.